I'm Kaushik Moitra and today through this online video I intend to explain the poem Thing of Beauty by John Keats. The poem tells us about how nature and its wonder mesmerize us and take away all the sorrow that surrounds us from time to time. So this poem is actually an excerpt from a classical poem Endymion also written by John Keats which talks about a young shepherd Endymion who falls in love with the vision of moon goddess Cynthia and in his pursuit of finding the moon goddess he explores the various realms of the world and composes particular poem. So I will explain the poem so that the essence of it and the crux of it is very clear. The poem starts with a particular line, a thing of beauty is joy forever. So the poet intends to say that a beautiful thing is a source of eternal joy and its attractiveness grows with the passage of time and its impact never fades away. It is a pleasure as a cool quiet bower or a sweet sleep with dreams of robust health and mental peace. It provides the beholder with a heaven of tranquility and solace. It is a beauty of nature that keeps us attached to this earth. Every morning we collect fresh lovely flowers and prepare garlands. The fascination of flowers is our bonding with the earth. It helps us steer clear of despondence and disappointments. Forget all our despair of acute shortage of noble souls, of misfortunes that overtake us to test our forbearance. Life is full of trials and tribulations and we often find ourselves in midst of gloom. It is at such depressing moments that a sight full of beauty dispels the pole of sadness from our spirit, making room for hope. So this is the initial part of the poem which talks about the beautiful things, how it surrounds our life and what impact it has on our lives. Till here I'll give you the line to line explanation and once I'm done with it, it will be thoroughly clear to you. So the opening line, a thing of beauty is a joy forever, is a first line that talks about that a beautiful thing is something that is permanent. Its effect, its impact and its beauty is something that never fades away. It is eternal in concept. Its loveliness increases, it will never pass into nothingness. The poet expresses the fact that it is a lovely thing and it only increases its passage of time and it will never ever pass into nothingness. I have often been asked by my students as to how can a beautiful thing increase its value. Well to that a general answer is perhaps that when you see a beautiful thing you pass on the word across and when you pass the word several people the you glorify beauty. It is somewhere or the other increased, it's exalted and a thing of beauty that increases with every passing day. It never diminishes, never fades into oblivion, but rather it is something that is rooted in someone's mind and hence a beautiful thing is something that is eternal and a source of joy and happiness to one and all for years to come. The next line talks about but will keep a bower quiet for us and a sleep full of sweet dreams. Bower refers to a place where we reside or our homes. So it will keep our bower quiet for us. Our life will be comfortable and calm. It will be quiet because beautiful things will surround our life. We will have a purpose and meaning to the life. And when every beautiful thing surrounds our life, somehow we find solace. Somehow we find peace. And hence it will be quiet, devoid of any agitation, devoid of any irritation or any kind of turbulence in life. And a sleep full of sweet dreams and health and quiet breathing. And not only this, what is the other effect of beauty that the poem talks about? That it says that it will have sleep full of sweet dreams. When beautiful things encompass our life, we are obviously not haunted by our nightmares. When everything is good and peaceful, we don't have disturbed sleep. So our sleep will be comfortable and health. And again, if there is no agitation, no irritation, and we are getting agitated about the sleep, our health will be restored. Our health will be also be good and quiet breathing. Quiet breathing is the calmness and tranquility will be present in our life. Will not be agitated, will not be impulsive in making decisions, will not be rash in life or irritated in life. So this is what these initial five lines of the poem implies. Moving on, the next few lines talks about, therefore on every morrow, are we reading a flowery band to bind us to the earth? 
the poet says that therefore on every morrow morrow refers to morning so every morning are we reading reading as in making or you know stringing the flowers together a flowery band now what is a wreath wreath is actually a band of flowers usually framed on a wooden structure which you usually put on the dead bodies or the corpses of human beings or else sometimes on christmas you will find it hanging on the door so that's a wreath so are we reading as in the poet is are we actually making a wreath that help us to stay connected to this world now as per my understanding and when the way i like to see it is the flowers is something that represent the memories every morning we experience something new so these experiences these memories are individual flowers that we actually decorate and embellish our life with and these flowers makes our life meaningful help us to feel rooted to this world and by virtue of these memories we feel connected to the people there are a lot of interpersonal relationships that are fostered because of these memories we cherish them for life and hence we feel connected with people around us and we feel connected to the world so that is what the poet questions that every morning when we are actually waking up are we contributing in making that particular wreath in a way that will help us to make this life even more beautiful this wreath full of flowers full of memories and full of our experiences makes us feel connected to one and all of this world and that is what gives purpose to our life and that is exactly what makes life very very beautiful moving on to the next line it talks about spite of despondence of inhuman dirt of noble natures of the gloomy days of all the unheld and overdarkened ways made for searching yes in spite of all some shape of beauty moves away the fall from our dark spirits so the poet here talks about the negativity of the world the poet intensifies a message that there might be a particular phase in our life when we are surrounded by all the negative things in the world when there too much of negativity that is happening around us we may be in absolute despair we may be completely dejected we may be completely low but even in such massive intense amount of gloom and sadness a small thing of beauty is powerful enough to remove all that bothers us now a thing of beauty need not essentially be a beautiful person or a beautiful sight or a flower a thing of beauty can be a small grace can be an act of kindness can be anything that brings us joy a beauty is not to be coined with something that is materialistic but rather it is to be understood as a feeling as something to be very abstract that gives us joy that kind of that brings out the best in us so that is what is categorized as a thing of beauty so that is what the poet says that, that in spite of all the negativity and atrocious things happening in this world and when we feel very very dejected and sad we should not lose hope because in such times of crisis and sadness a small act of beauty is sometimes very very powerful to remove all our sadness and all our gloom from our life uh, perhaps this is what the message of hope is all about now moving on to the next part of the particular poem the poet talks about the objects of beauty are countless the poet says that there are innumerable objects of beauty from where you can find joy now these include heavenly bodies like the sun and the moon the old and the young trees that provide cool shelter to sheep the daffodils flowers encased in green leaves the streams that flow through a shady passage which they make themselves with plants and the bushes that bear fragrant flowers these simple and even commonplace things lift the human spirit filling it with joy and delight in addition to these objects of nature there are wonderful tales of a legendary heroes who lived and died heroically which inspire us with their matchless beauty these beautiful things are metaphorically an endless source of nectar that pours down to us from heaven bringing eternal joy for the soul's grandeur they are like an elixir of life a never diminishing source of pleasure and delight an endless fountain of joy that seems to be a precious gift from the heaven but death is nothing but an inevitable end we as humans tend to be afraid of it the poet says that even you can find beauty in death not in the gory and the brutal death for us but the death of the legendary warriors the courageous kings and the martyrs of the land who has died for a reason for their death are inspirational for their death teaches us a lesson of selfless sacrifice and such deaths actually are indeed grand and beautiful and deserves to be glorified told 
to people as a he's a, either as a legend or as a folklore or as simply a brave tale it continues and with such beautiful impact that it inspires and motivates people and that is how the poet concludes by saying that even we can find beauty and beauty in death so in this particular poem as we see the poet tries to glorifies beauty and tells that beauty has a very very overpowering effect to change inspire and influence our life to a great deal and that is what the poem thing of beauty is all about this is kaushik mantra signing off for the day if you like the video do subscribe and share so that others like you can also be benefited from the explanation thank you very much